So there's some basic elements to HTML uh, that you're going to want to utilize in, in your blog post. Some of them tie into SEO aspects. Uh, others are just in terms of making it look a little better. Uh, the biggest ones that you're going to want to use, especially from a SEO standpoint, is going to be the H, the, the H titles, uh, one through six. Uh, those are primarily your headings, and use those to describe your, basically your paragraph text as you're going through a level of importance. Uh, then you've got your P tags and your BR tag, which is your line break tag. Those are paragraphs and line breaks. The only differences between the two of those um, is a paragraph puts a space between the content inside of it, and a line break will just break it down right to the next line. Spans are actually one of my favorite things to use um, from a styling standpoint um, using CSS. Uh, you can use those across uh, multiple areas within your content and add additional styling notes to them, uh, which we're going to go over a little later in the, uh, in the presentation using CSS, whether it be inline styling or uh, global styling through like a style sheet if you're, uh, you're hosting your own blog. Uh, the block quote is, in my opinion, probably something that's really underutilized by bloggers. Um, a lot of people go through their blogs uh, talking about things that they've gone through, you know, trips they've been on, people they've talked to at bars. Um, blog quotes typically picked up as a quote of text from a outside source. Uh, when you use the block quote command, it automatically gives it an indention uh, and a padding uh, around it. So that way it kind of shifts it away from the rest of the content and adds a separate focus to it. Kind of adds it as a little bit of a call out. In terms of the styling aspects, um, these have changed a little bit over the years. Uh, strong is essentially bold. Uh, it used to be a simple B tag uh, in older versions of HTML, uh, but strong has now uh, kind of replaced the, uh, the B tag uh, in newer versions of HTML. Uh, the EM uh, is emphasis. That basically italicizes your uh, the font or the text that's wrapped within it. Uh, that used to be uh, simply an I tag, just I within the, uh, the brackets. Uh, HR is a horizontal rule. Kind of works like a border for separations. Uh, you would essentially just put that tag in there and draw a line across the entire uh, content area that you have. Uh, it's good for adding segmentation inside a blog post, uh, you know, breaking things up a little bit. And the U tag is the underline. Um, I recommend people to, to not use it. Uh, and I, I always personally use a CSS styling for it, uh, which once again we'll go over later, um, which is simply like a text underline. So this is a bunch of garbled lorem ipsum text. If you can't make sense of it, I apologize. Um, this is a, just kind of like a basic format of how your HTML would be set up uh, if you were using a non-WYSIWYG editor. Uh, so you can see I start out with simple H1 tag, uh, P tag to contain all of my text, uh, and then have some different elements in there for block quotes, uh, spans, and what have you. So that text, there we go. That text would result in something like this being displayed in my browser window. Um, you can see here with the title tag, standing out at the top, it's a little bit more bold. Uh, the paragraph breaks it out uh, with a line, with here where the line break would be. Then we, here we have the block quote area, where like I said, it indents it and pads around it. Uh, and then just another heading area. So that all goes and kind of breaks it out from that perspective. Here I just went, I used the same text and added some strong tags uh, and some emphasis tags. So you can see the block quote now has some uh, it italization to it. And the text down here we have as a strong text. Uh, let's see here. Where you really get into styling aspects is really using the CSS. Uh, how, who here is familiar with CSS? All right, so a few of you are uh, familiar with it. So CSS is, basically stands for cascading style sheets. Um, 
they're used primarily uh, for adding specific styles to certain pieces of text. Um, they can be uh, set up as what they call an external, st external style sheet, uh, which is housed uh, outside of the, uh, the actual web page that you're viewing uh, as a separate file, like a .css file. Or they can be declared inline, um, which means they would be on the specific page or within the actual uh, tag that you're, you're looking to style. So this is an example using uh, some basic inline styles. So on my, on my H1 uh, tag here, what I've done is I've used the style declaration, uh, which is what you use to declare your inline, HT or your inline CSS. And then these commands here, and I have printouts up front for people uh, who would be so interested in having them show the, the actual style that I want to apply. So for my header tag, I decided I wanted to have a bottom border on it. So I would use a border bottom, uh, which is a standard CSS statement, uh, and then specify how thick I wanted it, which would be one pixel, whether I wanted it solid, dashed, and then the color of the border. So that would result in a display like this where it has a border underneath it of a gray color. Then for the block quote, I wanted to make that stand out a little bit more since that's some emphasized text that I want people to be able to see and pay attention to. So here I set a background to it. And you specify that with just a background dash color. Now you can also do some different things with backgrounds as well. Uh, you can use just a background command and actually specify a background image. Uh, so if you wanted to maybe put quotes on it, um, anything you could possibly think of as a background image, you'd be able to put that, Im that information in here and have that display and position it around the, uh, the actual space that you have available. Now I also wanted this to have a full border wrapped around it. So instead of just using the border dash bottom, I used just the border uh, the border statement, specify the width of the border, if I wanted it solid or dashed again, and then the color. And then I have padding. Padding is basically spacing around the uh, content within your container. So within your content area, you have your padding which spaces it out and allows a little bit more room uh, to be displayed around the information being, uh, being typed. So that way it's not cluttered, um, helps for uh, additional callouts or if you're putting images in it. Um, can be used also for, uh, for spacing out you know, bordering aspects. Then for my subheading, I simply wanted to make that a different color and then underline it. So instead of using the uh, U tag that I showed earlier, I set a style statement for a text decoration. Uh, this is pr probably the most ideal way to, uh, to do an underline, uh, simply because the, the U statement, while it's still supported, um, is slowly, well, I shouldn't say slowly, but is being deprecated from, uh, from HTML. Uh, and is not running, or is not going to be, will not render uh, going forward in some newer versions of HTML and uh, newer browsers. So setting, using a text decoration for you know, different aspects with a span allows you to actually allow for using underlying text wherever you want to um, in a much more efficient manner. Now you can do that by actually creating what are called classes and IDs. Um, the only difference really between classes and IDs uh, is IDs are generally designed to only be used for uh, one element within a page. Uh, and classes can be used globally throughout the page. It doesn't really uh, 
affect uh, what, you, what you would be doing in a blogging perspective. It's more of a development aspect to worry about. Um, so you can feel free to use classes and IDs uh, as whenever you would want to. Um, but I would always recommend using classes since uh, that's more of a best practice. So this text that I have up here, this is a declaration of global styles within an HTML document. This can be placed anywhere on the page. Um, I usually recommend putting it at the top of the page so that way it renders uh, first, so where your styles pick up if you have a slow loading browser. All you would do is you would use the style command or the style tag uh, and specify a type of text in CSS. That basically tells the browser that this is going to be a style sheet within, your, uh, doc within the page that it's rendering. So that way it knows to read it properly. Then you would, in this instance, I'm specifying a class. Classes are denoted by periods, uh, and IDs are noted by pound signs. So here you would, here I'm creating, just simply creating my class, uh, and I'm calling this cl particular class title. And I'm specifying the border bottom to be the one pixel solid gray background. Like I did previously, uh, instead of having it inline, I simply uh, enter in the class statement here and enter the class that I want to use without the period. So you would only use the period when declaring it when you're actually putting it in the style area here. You do not need to use it when you're actually specifying it down here in your, uh, your actual tag. Now I did the same thing with the quote. I added the styles that we origi I had originally written through on the block quote and added those as a singular class to the area for, uh, as a class quote. So that way I can use that across any area within my blog post that I wanted to. So that would give me the same exact layout that I had previously. Only now, I don't have all, this, all the additional HTML code specified on these actual tags. Uh, reasons for doing that, load time could be a concern. Um, can help with SEO for keeping your code weight down. Uh, so that way, it's actually indexing more text and less code. Uh, personally, it's just a best practice to make them as classes. Uh, so that way, you can use them throughout anywhere on your blog. Those are online references.